And we're talking on the source of inner strength. That is, how do I really have this courage? I want you to write the word victory down. But write it from uh, top to bottom. V, I below it, C below it, T below it, O below that, R below that, and Y below that. Like that, straight. You understand that? Write victory, but don't write it from left to right. Write it from the top to the bottom. Have you have you seen that now? Now, for, to have victory in our lives, I want to use that word victory. And the letters of that word victory. And that we write vigilance in front of that. Vigilance. If a soldier is going to have victory, he must be vigilant. Keep his eyes open. He must watch the enemy. He must watch his own heart. He must watch his own eating habits. He must watch his exercises. He must be vigilant over the enemy and over himself. I'm vigilant over his weapon that nobody takes his weapon away from him. If we're going to have victory, we must be vigilant. Watch the enemy. Watch and pray. Because the enemy, the devil, runs about, goes about as a running lion, seeking whom he may devour. I is for instruction. That soldier, if he's going to win victory, while the captain is giving instruction out, he must listen to those instructions. He must understand those instructions. He must practice those instructions. Are we going to have victory on the battlefield? Christ has given us instruction. Is the captain of our salvation he is the one that has never lost any battle he knows where the enemy is hiding he knows the thing that can easily make us to fall and therefore he is giving us instruction in his word read those instructions every day a man that bought a car and will not read the manual, the instruction on how to take care of that car, how to use that vehicle. That vehicle will run down, that vehicle will be destroyed before the real money that you spent on it has actually been spent. Somebody is sick. He went to the hospital. They gave him some pills. Together with instruction on how to use the pills. He did not listen to the instruction very well. He can kill himself. We must listen to the instruction. Given in the word of God. The commandments, the warnings. So that we obey. Number one, be vigilant. Number two, I is for instruction. C is for consecration and commitment. 
the soldier on the battlefield if he is not consecrated and committed every time that he is on the battlefield he will be crying like a baby my wife is now at home and because I have to fight as a soldier I am missing my wife a lot mommy is now at home I wonder how they are doing now without me my children I wonder now whether other children in the yard are beating them that man is not committed to that battle he will be an absent minded fighter he might die he will be, he'll be having self pity every time as an evangelist you are going to have the victory don't have self pity have, con have consecration and say this is what I've committed my life to and I will do it it may rain it may be hot I may have to sleep in the hot in the village I may not be able to get all the food I need every time this is my life's goal only one life and I want that life to be committed to something serious that has eternal reward. Consecration and commitment. T is for trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. Trust those promises. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And when you have that trust in the Lord, and you know that if he needs to send an angel, he will send an angel to protect me. He says, I am precious in his sight. He says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. He says, I am the apple of his, eye, uh, of his eyes. He says, I'm a peculiar treasure even unto him. And he says, I'm with you till the end of the world. Why should I, why should I fear? When Christ is behind me and Christ is before me and he says, I'm the one that holds unto the seven candlesticks. And he says, Says I know my sheep and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand and he says I go to heaven to prepare a place for you when I finish I'm coming back for you why should I be afraid why should I run from the battle he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world trust in the Lord trust in the Lord. Anytime there is difficulty, remember the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and I start, they comfort me. But don't you see those enemies? Yes, I see them. But I see beyond the enemies. I see my shepherd. And he prepares a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head. And my cup runs over. Are you not afraid that evil will follow after you? No, my shepherd is thinking about me. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Are you not afraid at the end of all, the, all this preaching? He will throw you away and you'll even go to hell? No, not at all. 
I will dwell in his house forever. Trust in the Lord. That's how to have the victory. You are vigilant. Then you pay attention to instruction. You have commitment and consecration. You are trusting in the Lord. You are obeying the Lord. That's all in victory. Those soldiers if they have ear, hearing problem they cannot go to the battle to fight apart from the strength of the soldier he needs his eyes so he can be vigilant he needs his ears so that he can listen to instruction and obey instruction if a soldier has sight problem he's almost getting disqualified out of the army if he has hearing problem it's almost out of the army. You must not have hearing problem. My sheep must still hear my voice. And then you must still be following and obeying. It's an obedience that is victory. And then R is resisting. And we have a lot to resist. One will resist the devil. You know, the devil is always coming to try you, he's always coming to, re to deceive you. And he's always saying, You are the worst pastor that ever lived on the face of the earth. Look at the work you are doing. You think that God will reward you? It's all a waste of time. That's the devil. Resist him. And he's saying, even your messages. Your messages cannot get any soul saved. It's a lie. Don't you listen to the testimonies of members of your church? Oh, that say, I thank God. Before I came to this church, I didn't know Jesus as my personal savior. But now I thank God. God. Because through listening to you and responding to that altar call, now I know Jesus as my personal Savior. Resist the devil. He will try to deceive you as if you are not doing any good at all. As if you are not preaching the gospel at all. He will try to discourage you. But not only resisting the devil, you see this flesh that we carry about. If we have any enemy at all, this flesh is an enemy. When this flesh is getting hungry, the flesh will say, why are you following God again? Why are you still preaching the gospel? Here you are, you are hungry. Why not sell your birthright like Esau? So you can have some pot when you are thirsty this flesh will begin to cry out again and say this is too much if this is what the call of God means upon me upon the body I don't want you to be in the call of God if you try to pray and fast at 11 o'clock in the morning 11 o'clock the body is crying again and he's saying food, 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 food. And you try to read Bible. Your body cries out for food. You try to pray. Your body cries out for food. And then somebody that did not remember that you existed when you were not fasting, he will prepare good food. And it's on that day of fasting and he will say something spoke to me to come and bring pastor food and your body will say here it is, here it is, here it is now, 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 let's eat and you will say I'll fast tomorrow 
That thing is cancelled. Another six months will pass, there will be no time to fast. The flesh receives that thing. Then temptation. You know, sometimes people don't understand. You have a wife at home. But you know the wife. You see her when she is not dressing properly. She is working in the kitchen. Why should a person dress her best in the kitchen? Everybody dresses normally and a little bit rough in the kitchen. And you see her before she takes her bath. Her hair is not all well arranged. You see her while she is tired and worn out and yawning. Have you watched people when they yawn? They look ugly when they yawn. That's why we cover our mouth when we yawn. Because it makes us look ugly. And you see your wife while she is tired and yawning. You know when you see other women? You see them when they are well dressed. When they set their hair properly. When they do everything well. And the flesh will say, look at them, they are more beautiful than your wife. No, they are not more beautiful. Only that you see your wife at the wrong time, you see them at the right time. You see them when they are well dressed and they are deliberately dressing that way to attract the outsider but your wife says after all he is my husband and uh, whether I'm in the kitchen or not I look beautiful to her to him and the devil begins to tell you look at your wife have you ever watched women when they are pregnant and they suffer a lot and they don't look as beautiful as they are ordinarily and then you see all those other women outside they look charming they look smart they look well dressed and they look, they look as if they have extra money to take care of themselves and the devil will come and say you see them they are better than your wife no if your wife has the money that she had if you can supply the same clothes that they have your wife too will look more beautiful than they they have maids at home that are cooking for them they just sit on rocking chair watching television if your wife also has a maid that will put water in the bathroom for her do all the cooking for her and have also some people to take care of the children and not be pregnant every year to have children because when a woman has seven children, eight children we should salute that woman and if you too can make them rest a little give them enough money oh yes they will be more beautiful than those people you see outside but thank God our wives are not complaining and when you think they complain they are not complaining as they could have complained they don't have enough money to even feed and whenever they, are, they cook that little meal they say my husband evangelist or pastor must eat first those people you see outside that you say they are beautiful they eat first and then the husband takes what remains and so your wife is beautiful 
How did you marry her? With your eyes closed? No, with your eyes open. You saw they were beautiful, that's how you married them. Now, if they don't look beautiful now, it's not their fault. Whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? The husband, who are those husbands? Okay, it's our fault. So let's take care of them and resist temptation that will make us to feel that those other women outside are more beautiful. If you saw what they were covering with the clothes they wear, you'll run away from them. I want you to say, I thank God for my wife. I thank God for my wife. Those of you who are not married, I don't want I don't know what to tell you to say. Okay, I thank God I'll marry a good wife. Let's know that our wives are beautiful. Remember victory, vigilance, instruction, consecration and commitment, trust in the Lord, obedience, resisting the devil and resisting the flesh. Why is yielding to the Spirit of God? Let's also have the victory as the Spirit of the Lord. Lord is talking to us and ministering to us. We yield to the leading of the Spirit of God. Now, the source of inner strength. Looking into all those things that we have said now on having the victory. Let's just briefly mention these points. Number one. May Christ your Savior also your support. Be intimate in fellowship with the Savior. In communion with your shepherd. In all the steps you are taking. Always ask the Lord, what next do I do? Even messages that we are preaching. Pray about those messages. Messages. Be intimate with the Lord. Make Christ who is your Savior also your support. Number two, have a strong conviction on spiritual and eternal issues. Conviction on spiritual and eternal issues. Very quickly, I want to give you areas where you must have strong, unshakable conviction. Something you must never have any doubt about. Number one, have a strong conviction on your own call. Your call, the call of the Lord upon your life. Be sure about it. Know that God has called you a preacher, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist. Know that this is the only thing in life that can make you happy. That if you deviate and you do any other thing as your number one priority thing in life, you will not be completely happy. Add that on changing, unshakable conviction. I am sure the Lord called me. And he called me to do this work. Now you see, when you are sure of the call of God, if difficulty comes in that call, you will not leave that thing. Everybody has difficulty. The student has difficulty in the, at school. But he knows if I'm going to have anything in life, I must go through this, through this 
face difficulty and succeed. Be sure of your call. In John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not, you have not chosen me but I have chosen you. I have chosen you. Number two, have a strong conviction on Christ being the only Savior. There is no alternative. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 There is no other name Given among men whereby we can be saved Number 3 Have a strong conviction on the Bible as being the word of God There is no other revelation Number one, be sure of your call. What I'm doing now is the important thing, the priority of my life. No other profession to take my time. Be sure of Christ as a Savior. There is no alternative. He is the only one that can save. Be sure of the Bible as the word of God. There is no other revelation. In Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration and is good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now be sure of the experience of salvation. There is no other passport to heaven. And in Hebrews chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Now be sure of the end of a sinful life. Judgment at the end of a sinful life. For those unbelievers, that will motivate you and push you and drive you to go and preach to them. It is hell fire at the end of an unrepentant life. There is no escape. Let me show up this and think about this a lot. There is only one life. If you may spend it, there is no duplicate. You can spend again and make right what has been wrong. Your call. There's no other profession, no other priority in your life, Christ, no other savior, there is no alternative, the Bible, there's no other revelation, salvation is the only passport to heaven, there is no other passport, and if people die in sin, there is no escape from the judgment of God and you have only one life there is no duplicate spend it for God if you have conviction on these important things it will give you courage and conviction and commitment to stay on that job how do I maintain constant boldness and courage number one by prayer. Acts chapter 4 verses 31 to 33. Number 2 by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt and 
he behaved as seeing him that is invisible. Number three, fellowship with God. Without me, ye can do nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. Number four, association with dynamic ministers of the gospel. Proverbs 27, verse 17. Iron sharpness, iron. Number five, let there be real deep study of the word of God. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 5. Knowledge brings strength. Number six, dedication to service. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And love for the work and love for those who are trying to win. In First Thessalonians chapter two, verses eight to ten. And because ye were dear unto us, we shared with you not only the gospel of Christ, but our own very souls being affectionately desirous of you. How did those men in the Bible maintain their courage and boldness in the Lord? They prayed a lot. They believed in the Lord. They had continual intimate fellowship with God. They associated with other ministers of the gospel. Like this meeting we're trying we're having together. Association, associating with one another encouraging one another praying for one another even write, writing letters of encouragement to one another after we have left this uh, meeting then they studied a lot they were dedicated to the service and there was great love for the work in their hearts the engineer loves his work the doctor loves his work the university lecturer loves his work and the market women love their work those traders love their work the cartoon rearer loves his work we must also love our work why shouldn't we be happy in what we are doing you find people that rise up and they say I'm an engineer and then uh, the doctor rises up I'm a doctor the lecturer rises up and he says I'm a lecturer and the pastor is thinking what will I say when it comes to my turn aren't you happy you are a pastor aren't you happy you are, you are what you are be confident and rise up also and say I'm a pastor a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ love it and do it keep on doing it and loving it and on the day of your death if possible keep on preaching the gospel until that time and when we get to heaven you will know the work you did was the greatest work you could have done on the face of the earth it's good to be a doctor it's good to be an engineer it's good to be a professional person it is best to be a preacher of the gospel I believe from what we have heard today God will grant every one of us to have courage for victory in our service
at last I finished. And you happy I could stop. Now I will rise up and will pray. I will thank the Lord for what He has spoken to us. And will commit ourselves to the Lord. That we will be courageous in the work of the Lord. And we will retain the victory. We will retain the victory.